Welcome to the Commercial Gas Engineer channel. In this particular site I went to, it was a boiler that had been off for approximately two to four years. Here's the boiler and it's got a burner on it down here. The burner is dated to 1994, so it's approximately 30 years old. Can you see it here? So about 30 years, there's the date of manufacture. It's been off for a while. They've been asked to see its condition. You can see this pump down here, which looks in quite a state, although it could potentially work. And then there's another pump up here, the constant temperature pump. The flue looks like it's in an okay state, although a flue flow test would have to be carried out. So and the gas meter has been capped and there is no information as to why. So I was carrying out checks to see if I could get power to it, but for some reason there was no power. So I switched off some of the pumps and the boiler and different things because a breaker was down. So I flicked the breaker up, found a fuse in my van. I checked the fuse, it seemed like it was fine. So I managed to get power through. But the only way I could get it to stay on without tripping the breaker was by removing the programmer. Any ideas on this one, guys? What do you think it could be? But I'm at a loss now, so I don't know what could be the issue. I could bypass the program. I could buy a new programmer, but I'm not sure what is causing the MCB to trip. Any ideas? I checked the wiring to see if anything was loose. You can see some wires that are here but they're also loose on the other end they're not connected on the other end i switched off the switches that i could switch off by the boiler as well and tested it it's still tripping and then here's another terminal box that the wires are going to as well here's the relays as well i was looking to see the condition of them this relay here looked okay uh, but the relay on the right looked like it was in a bad shape but i found the company that did some work on the boiler four to five years before in 2019 was the last that they did and i'm going to give them a call and find out if they know anything about this boiler because I think it's been shut off almost since then but nobody knows why and there was the date it was last service so I have to do a bit of investigation work and contact this company who are still in business and see if they know anything about the unit at another site I had a gas fired water heater in the kitchen so this water heater basically was not lighting it was a Renai failing to light with a foot code had no parts, no spare parts, so I was inspecting the unit. And then I pulled the probes out, as you can see, and this is the condition of them. Uh, the ignition and detection has got a lot of dirt on it. And this is a little look inside at the unit. You can see it looks like it needs a good clean out. And uh, monitor that when, uh, when it comes on. So here's a picture of the flame inside. The flame looks nice and blue once I got it back on and I tested it approximately three times and it lit consecutively and then I got a picture of the temperature rise in the kitchen as well this is the model it's a Renai then I went to another site to carry out some work at this particular site I was working on the boilers doing a ppm and a first time ppm at this site at the same time I was doing a little recce to see if everything was operational looking at pump details and so on, making a note. Sometimes it doesn't take that long, even though it's not part of the job, to just have a little MOT check of what's happening in the plant room, see if pumps are running, to see where things are in the plant room, strainers and so on, and also to learn at the same time whilst you're in there. It's not good to just go to the boiler and switch off from everything else, I believe. And then this was a Weizmann calorifier. This looked like some form of fan that they had here. I don't know if this was mechanical, a mechanical ventilation, and then down there a bit of pipe I had to be careful of. And there's some gauges for the next to the pump. And there's two pressurization units here. one over here on either side of the plate one is on the boiler side 
And there's some Weizmann boilers, three that were operational. Weizmann Vitodens 200Ws, I believe. This is a little look inside. The fan down here and the gas valve at the back there. Another unit. And another unit, so there's three of them, and the gauges, yes, are not working on two of them, only one of them. They seem to be prone to getting blocked. So this whole installation looked very good in my opinion. Apart from the PRVs not having any copper pipe in them going down, I thought those should be going closer to the ground. Um, on this installation what else the condensate looked a bit installed in a strange way to an extent the way they had it stretched around but it still wasn't that bad but i liked how everything was clipped here and so on actually in this picture i just realized that there was a leak on the boiler that i didn't flag up i flagged up a lot on this service but i just realized here that there was a leak there which i'm going to write my paperwork as i have not so as I have not submitted the paperwork yet, I'm going to write up about that leak there. I like when they put in um, test points there for the gas and that you don't always have to go into the boiler. And then here, this looks like a, some form of sequence control of the boilers. Sometimes they seem very complicated and big, but this sequence control, I'm, I'm sure it does more than just controlling when the boilers come on, but it's, it looks like a big computer there. If you know more about it, tell me or what its responsibility is other than telling the boilers when to come on. That's just the method of getting into high and low. And the flue also looked like it was installed well. Had some clipping in there. I thought it could have had some other clips on the other side as well, above the um, main header on the larger diameter of pipework, but I'm no flue specialist. Okay, they have a pump that I can switch on. I switched one of the pumps on and it seems to be working fine. The other pump I think is off on the BMS. Yes, the other pump on the BMS looks like it's been switched off in another part of the building. This is how you get the boiler into high and low fire. You press OK with the square and then, oh. and then one on brings it on and then you can, I'm here getting my readings. I was checking my working pressure as well when all three boilers were on and it was pretty good. It was, I think it was 1920 millibars when they're all in high fire. And even though I had the heating on for such a short period of time, I think it was like 10, 15 minutes, the management were asking me how long I was going to have the heating on for because it was quite a hot day. But it had to be done because I couldn't get the heat anywhere. So as you can see, the pressure is dropping down with one of the boilers on. I think when I had two of them on in high fire, I went down to about 20 millibar and then about 19 something with three of them on, which is quite good. This dab pump here was showing a fault code. You see, I need to look into that, but they weren't complaining of not of not having any hot water or anything of that nature. So, and then I had hot water service pumps here. One looked like it was in bad condition, and the one at the top as well looked like it was a bit corroded, but they still were working nonetheless. These expansion vessels here gave them a knock test making sure that they had air in there. I didn't get my gauge on and go that deep, but just wanted to see if they were pressurized. They had some pressure in them. I wasn't there for that, so but I was just doing a quick little recce for the report. Checked them both. I, it's nice to see when they're lagged, when they have a drain off, when there's an isolation. That helps you to recharge them. At this particular site, I was cleaning four magna cleans. And it wasn't easy because I was on a ladder and the pipe wasn't clipped very well. I thought these magnet cleans were quite interesting because I don't think I've actually cleaned these ones before. So I thought it was interesting how they operated. So I was shutting off the valves. 
and working on these as you can see they are they're the um, I, I think they're called tf1s or something of that nature total filter fernox and the valves were quite awkward because every time i turned the valves the that the pipe work was starting to leave leak on the unions from the movement filter off but later came to the conclusion that it's so much better when you pull the magnet out obviously and the magnetite falls off quite quickly there we go it's a lot more easier this way but you don't need to wash the magnet so much you just need to wash this part here then as well instead of me washing it down this is the first one i did on the second and third and fourth i just brought a cloth up and to stop me from going up and down the ladder i had to also check an immersion element I was checking it and this was um, just making sure my multimeter which I was testing was working and then this is the resistance check and then also remember that the continuous for the pipe work should have throughout and then the increased pipe size that you have you can often forget these things if you're not checking them often on unbented cylinders and also the size here I believe this is a maximum distance that you're allowed so I was checking here, you can see this is the maximum distance. I believe it's the 500 mil maximum distance before the, um, I believe the Tundish area. And I was doing a test on a Hamworthy fleet in high file. I was getting both of them on. And then I think I went down as little as 90 mil before the boilers switched off. So I had this one in low file. Remember how to get these into low file? You hold these two buttons for quite a long time. And then you use this for down or up and then it brings you into your low and high file at this particular site i was finding it interesting trying to get the boilers on sometimes i find it's almost like a breakdown when you're doing servicing because you have to get the boilers on in the summer so look you can see i was turning on one of the switches and it wasn't kicking in so what i did is i found a relay and swapped it around I also was checking up here on these um, little mini controllers if they were kicking in as well. Now I went into my wiring diagram. My wiring diagram you can see here. So boiler one run and it shows you the relay and then also the numbers as well. If you look on here you can see the corresponding numbers like the 201, 202. They play a part. Can you see 201 and then 201 was in there and then also look underneath here for the r1s r2 r3 so the different relays play a part okay also in here you can see boiler run see the r4 boiler run that's the relay r4 so sometimes it's not easy to get the it's not easy to always get the bms on there's the R4 there. So that particular relay, you can flick them up, but this one was 40 at the time. I had to swap it with another relay. So here we go. Gonna push this relay in and flick it on and see if it kicks in. So here we go, the relay's working now, unlike before. I did force one of these jumpers over before in order to get the boiler on. Gonna turn off everything now because I've got my readings on both my boilers. I managed to get my boiler one on earlier and my boiler two but it looks like it was sticking on the BMS and I had earlier had moved the jumper over in order for my boiler to kick in thank you for joining me until next time bye bye bye